Why is this cow on my face? I'm trying to talk. Hello everybody, Prowl here and welcome to another episode on the Bedrock Guide. There's a spider climbing my witch's tower right now. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It does kind of add to the look of the place, but he's also taking up my mob cap. So he's probably, there's two of them. They need to die. So in today's episode, we're just gonna look at the witch tower all day. I'm just kidding. Although I could just look at it all day. I'm super happy with how this thing turned out. But this episode is going to be a little bit different than some of the, the past ones. We're not going to be building a new farm in today's episode. Instead, we are going to be going over maintaining and updating your farms. Because I'm sure you guys are like me and eventually reach a point where you kind of just feel like you need to go through and refresh everything or you need to add stuff to this farm or change stuff with that farm just to kind of like meet your needs a little bit better and that's the stage that we're at right now so let's go through and let's start getting some work done the first one i want to do here is actually going to be a pretty simple one um when i first decided to do the fish farm here which we got some fish coming down right now um or really it's a squid farm i intended it mostly as a squid farm um, and I ended up setting up three sets of chests here for squid ink. I, I don't need anywhere near that amount of squid ink. I just don't. It sounded like a great idea at the time, but really, I think we're going to use a lot more of this fish for some XP banks in a later episode. And we're not going to talk about those now. We'll talk about those later. So really, I need more fish than anything right now and I have my second account AFK up there getting lots of fish as you can see it rolling in it's gonna roll in quick um, I say we change the filters here around a little bit that way we can capture one two maybe three rows of cod and then two rows of salmon uh, we'll leave one row just like miscellaneous blank things I don't know no let's do one two three let's do four rows of cod and two rows of salmon i don't need what else do i have in here bones i don't i don't need the bones uh, we don't need a blank like nothing chest everything else can basically just go into the trash can i think would be fine so we're just going to swap out the things into filters here and this is really an easy change to make uh the first one we'll leave the ink sacks in there perfectly fine the second one we'll go ahead and we'll just swap the ink sack out with cod third one again we'll just swap the ink sack out with cod uh, this one we'll swap it out with cod again so that's four one two three and this one's already cod this one's got salmon in it this one i didn't build the filter for because we didn't use a filter there so i just need to get the redstone box we'll repeat the filter right here i'll probably reshow how to build this thing like really quick again just because we're going to do it at another farm and then we'll be all done okay this farm's all taken care of i think we're going to stick around in the area and I need to do a little bit of maintenance behind the scenes, like behind, like <laughs> behind some of the walls in there. Um, so let's, let's get together a bunch of shulker boxes and let's go back there and take a look. And we just need to see a lot of what we have in there. So it's been a little while since I've looked in here, but we have so many shulker boxes full of stuff. And there's some things that we can probably just really stop collecting and let despawn. Um, so how about this? Let's go through and let's pull out. Let's really pull out all of these, I guess. And then let's take them over to the areas where we're most likely to use slash need them. Example being like rotten flesh. We should probably start keeping that over close to the uh, trading hall area. That way we can start trading that with the clerics and uh, gunpowder. We can keep in our main base storage or our starter base storage until we have a main base storage area and yeah, etc. So. I guess we'll start stockpiling some shulker boxes. Okay, so we got our clerics over here. And I think just maybe somewhere in the middle, we'll like, you know, pop one of these guys out right here. Plop down a chest instead. And I got more rotten flesh than I will ever know what to do with. 19 shulker boxes of rotten flesh. Lifetime supply right here. And we got four boxes of gunpowder. And I think there's one in here too. So we have five total boxes of gunpowder. That'll last us for a little while for like a while for rockets. No clue if I'm gonna need a lot of TNT at some point. So we're definitely gonna need to make sure we AFK and stock up some more gunpowder just in case we ever wanna make a, a large amount of TNT. Um, also, where is it? Um, we need there, there we go. We need to make a bunch of shulker boxes because we need to refill the shulker box loader over at that farm. 
So I'm gonna see if I have a bunch of chests somewhere. I'm probably gonna have to make them. And then I got some here, but I probably want more. Um, that way we can start collecting more of the things that we need. Now here's the maintenance I was looking to do. I'm gonna pop in back here. And this is where I keep my shulker boxes that are going into the shulker box loader. As you can see, other than there might be some in the um, in the dropper or the dispenser over there, it's pretty much empty. So I think we just go through and apparently I have to do this at a crafting table and we can just make a whole bunch of shulker boxes. This is why it's good to go end raiding people. This is why it's good to go end raiding. If we can get this guy filled up and you can never have too much gunpowder and it doesn't come in as quick as some of the other things do. So really just like getting a whole bunch in there is probably gonna be a good idea. Also, this last filter right here just kind of collects like all of the extra stuff that's not filtered otherwise. And I have a lot of those boxes just kind of like chilling out here. So I think most of them are down bottom here. So I think we'll go through those and just like pick the good stuff out. Like I could use some redstone dust from the witches that were in there and maybe we'll pick out the gunpowder just so we have that. Just so we, I mean, I don't want to lose all that stuff and the rest of it's probably junk. We just get rid of it or whatever. Okay, I got the last of shulker boxes from the mob farm and we got a whole bunch of bones here. So I think the next step in our adventures of uh, doing a little bit of maintenance is we, we should probably convert all of these bones into bone meal and then we can change them into bone blocks just so they take up a lot less space. So I'm going to show you guys a quick easy way to do that. And I lied because there's not one. You used to be able to sit here and um, just like shift click the bone meal. It would just make it over and over again. It just automatically throw it on the ground. That doesn't work anymore. Now when you do that, it gets stuck in your hand. You can't you can't get rid of it. And you have to relog. Oh, I hope they fix this bug soon. Okay, hold on. I might have a good method to do this. I might have a good method. Let's go through and let's have only one stack of bones on us. Let's fill the rest of our slots with an individual bone meal. Let's stand on all the bones. Let's see if we craft it. Yeah, look, that's gonna work, that's gonna work. What we're gonna do is we'll keep picking up the bones while we make the bone meal. <laughs> yes, this works. It's a lot quicker. Okay, and then once we get to that point where we've like got all the bone meal, uh, we can go through, we can compress all of it into uh, Oh man, I just made die blocks of bone and make sure we leave enough bone meal for us to refill those inventory slots again. Put the bone blocks in here. Take this again. Go through like so. Fill all the slots. Stand on the bones and repeat process. And we'll do this over and over again. And it should make this relatively quick to do, at least compared to any other way of doing it. Okay, we ended up getting about four shulker boxes worth of um, bone blocks out of that. And now I think it's a good time to condense the iron farm because we got lots and lots of iron. And I would like to keep getting lots and lots of iron. So this thing filling up all the way would not be good. This one's actually easier to do because everything just combines into the iron blocks. So kind of what I can do here, First of all, it's probably best just to empty out my inventory somewhere. So I'll put a chest down here, get all the stuff out of my inventory like so. And then we're just going to click here and I'm going to control Q to drop the whole stack. We're just going to drop all of the iron out all over the ground and hopefully not any more of the poppies because I don't need that on the ground right now. And then what we can do after we get all of the boxes empty is first of all, we can watch a whole bunch of iron golems die all at once. Gosh, this farm is so fast. But second of all, we can stand on top of all of it right here. It's like this and we can shift click iron blocks and it will keep making them until all of the iron is gone or we fill up our inventory with iron blocks, which we don't have that many. So there we go. Now all the iron's gone and we just took what was a whole bunch of iron, about three chests full or so. And then now we could go ahead and we could just put all these iron blocks back in and now we have a lot more storage space available for all of our other things. Also, not keeping the poppies and the string from here. I may, it may be time here. I don't know if we'll do this today. Maybe we'll do this in this episode. We need to, we need to filter. We need to filter all of this um, and get rid of the poppies and get rid of the string because we, we get red dye and we get string from other sources. So um, I'll come back to that. But now I want to go over to a more recent part of the base and we need to do a little bit of an upgrade. 
And here's going to be the larger project today. So in the last episode, when we built this, I said, nah, I don't, you know, I don't really need an item sorter. It's fine. We'll just, you know, have all the drops, you know, just go into a bunch of chests and we'll sort through it. No big deal, right? Yeah. I, after one night of AFK, we have a bunch of chests, mostly filled with potions and partially filled with like the other drops. So... I think we need to, I think we need to sort this. So I believe what we're going to do is we're going to dig that, that away or dig that away over there. And, uh, we need to figure out how many different sortable items we have here, have one row for each of those, and then have a series of chests for potions because we could, we could maybe upgrade these slash use these in various different ways. And then we'll be a little bit more organized. So I guess first step is start digging. Okay, so I've actually prepped the area a number of ways. We have expanded it this way. I've expanded it going that direction too. Uh, we took the top row of chests off and added a bottom row of chests. We've added hoppers in the back. We have the top row of hoppers facing all the way down this way. And we have the second row of hoppers not facing forward into anything, but they are all facing forward in that direction. So that's kind of all the prep that we need to do. And then we're going to be sorting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different categories here. So we need sorters on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. And that will leave us with three rows of potions, basically. So to get this area kind of prepared up and ready to go, let's, um, let's get a different block on us. And then let's also get all of our redstone components that we need. Awesome, got our redstone components. Now let's go ahead and let's hop up here and get on top of this row because this is where we're gonna start out with putting our comparators. And I probably just get myself a little bit of headroom over here to be able to like jump when I need to. We're gonna take our comparators and put them here facing in this direction. And then in those comparators, I'm holding down my duck button. I should be able to click with no problem. And now we can have a row of blocks here and then we are going to need we need a row of blocks right across here just like this on this wall and then we can put redstone torches on all of these right here just like that um, i'm going to put a temporary block right here temporary block right here and put another block there that is where we're going to drag across more of our uh wool and we're going to take our repeaters Face them all in this direction to lock all the hoppers. We're gonna take our glass, put it across right here, which is gonna make sure our torches do not power those blocks. And then last but not least, we're gonna take our redstone. And we're gonna go ahead and plant that across here, plant that across here. And I realized that I had a block up here powered, which was powering all of this. So I, I removed that. That's why you saw the redstone all powered up. And don't forget your row of redstone dust on the back here. And now the sorter part is all done. And now the not so fun part of <laughs> I need to manually like sort these things. I guess mostly it's just going to end up being the, the bottles that are going to be a pain in the butt of moving them all down here. But at this point, it's all ready to go. I'm going to spend a little bit of time sorting and then we're going to move on to the next maintenance project. Next bit of maintenance that needs to be done is we need to take care of some things here at the villager trader. I haven't used this thing barely any since I made it other than the uh, librarians. And one of the things we're doing, um, water isn't necessary to keep these guys linked to beds anymore. This changed a little while ago now. And um, I think it's time we go ahead and just get the water out. Let these guys uh, dry their feet off a little bit, maybe relax a bit, have a good time and not be just trapped in water for the rest of their lives. And then I think after this, we might do a little bit of trading over there, like zomb zombifying and unzombifying some villagers. So we need some discounts. We're gonna get some discounts too. Okay, so I just got done doing a zombification process here on these guys and got them all maxed discounts. And there's a bit of a problem if you saw my episode from earlier in the year um, in getting these guys converted. You can no longer just put the zombie in the corner. He will not convert them anymore. So we have to do a little bit different of a process, which actually I'd like to show you guys really quick on these two right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to put a slab right here. Um, I'm going to knock this out and I can knock this and this out and that is fine. These guys cannot get out. I'll put a block right here just so my uh, rail will stop there. Let me grab this rail right here. One, two, three, just like that. Uh, let me grab 
a little lever just like that. And now what we can do is we could take him, I could shove him up in there. If you're gonna push your your zombificator, make sure that you don't have um, thorns on because he'll he'll punch you and get hurt. And we'll just leave him there. And then for those of you that did not see the earlier episode, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a arrow of weakness and shoot him with just a regular bow, a non-enchanted bow. One shot, one shot, and then we will feed both these guys golden apples. And we're gonna have to do this a bunch of different times to make sure that um, they actually have the maximum amount of discounts available, like these guys over here that are selling this for one, and this for one, and this for one, etc. Everything's being sold for one. Uh, we're gonna get these guys that point too. But now we have a little bit of problem with these guys we need to solve. My problem is that while I was doing my zombificating and discounting process, they got their workstations mixed up with each other. So really what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna have to take them all up. I've, I've, these were on the top, now they're on the bottom. So now I can knock this out, they can't get out. And now I'm gonna do this one profession at a time. And we need to be able to see the particles that they're gonna emit when they link. So I might have to get back here a little bit. Let's sit this down. You see that guy right there. So now we just need to take this over to this dude. I need an easy way over. That's not gonna be a big pain in the butt. Put this right here. And was it this guy? Was it him? It was that guy. Okay. Awesome. Cause if you if they're not linked up properly and can't reach their workstation, they're not gonna refresh their prices. So we need to make sure that we get uh, pricing refreshes. That guy beside him on the other side there. And we're just gonna keep doing this till we get them all in place, and then I'm gonna show I'm gonna go through and continue to discount these dudes. And now that they've all linked up, I can do things like take all of the sticks that I've gotten from the witch farm. And now I can bring these guys over and trade with all of these guys for one emerald per stick. And especially I need to do the ones that I have not unlocked all the way, like this guy right here. Bam. And then not only is this gonna get me a lot of emeralds, it's gonna help me level these guys up. And then I can access what I've been waiting to access for quite a long time, which you can see on some of these guys over here that I've already unlocked everything. I can get arrows with um, effects on them, tipped arrows. And I've been waiting to do that for so long and it's about time we got it done. Cause now we can start using tipped arrows. And the next thing I wanna do is we've had a lot of gold sitting in here for a while. So just to show you guys the easy way of doing that and we just wanna like get it all out. I have a crafting table here. We're just gonna break all these chests. Super easy. Have the crafting table within reach. Stay in here, hold down a shift button and we're just gonna, it wasn't supposed to do that. I'm just gonna click away on the gold ingots here until we've crafted up all of the nuggets and then we'll then take all of this and then turn it into the gold box. And there we go, lots of gold blocks. I'm gonna add it to my stack. I've already done a few of these so far. I got a few more to do, but man, does this thing make a whole lot of gold. And probably the last thing that I need to do in this episode, I just finished, and that is an update to the iron farm. Now we had been collecting poppies, string, and everything in these chests here. And if you hear the ticking, you probably know that that has changed. Uh, we have now taken the hopper line and ran it this way. Um, we have a item filter here, which I showed off earlier in the episode um, that is filtering the iron. Remember, use sub to prowl diamonds. It gives you 127% more efficiency. Um, and then anything that's not iron, it's just going into this dropper right here and going into lava. So the string, the poppies, I don't need it. You guys might, right? But I have so many ways of getting red dye and like farms to get string. I have, I have shulker boxes full of string. So it's not something I need to keep. So it's all going in there. Everything is following a long water line. It's gonna lead over here. And I thought it would be a good idea to divert everything over to the blacksmith area. Um, please excuse the no floor, um, hashtag professional block problems. And since this is a, um, I guess like a blacksmith area, it made sense for the iron to come here. And I'm never gonna need all 15 of these chests here to store stuff that I am uh, smelting. So we're just sending all the iron here and then, you know, we'll get several stacks of iron in here and then every so often I'll come in and I'll like craft it all in the blocks. Why is this cow on my face? I'm trying to talk. Go away, cow. Oh. <laughs> wow. So I think that takes care of anything that I need to show here on camera. Anything else I'm going to do is probably going to be to the trading hall behind me. I have this one last side to do and maybe breed up a couple villagers <laughs> that are missing. But 
bad things happened anyways um we we got a lot done and i think these are things that need to get done and this is just kind of a reminder to all of you to make sure that you you slow down a little bit and take the time to really make sure that your farms and you know all of the things that you're working on are working the way they're supposed to and in a way that's like working for you and is convenient for you now a question i've been getting from a lot of you here and i just wanted to address like very briefly was about some of the packs that i i use um for example i have things like the durability viewer here the chunk border pack the enchantment glint reducer and a few more things as well uh, better hoppers a lot of these things that i'm using and will probably continue to add more of and use more and you'll see them in the videos are packs that are being made by um, some people that are part of my bedrock vanilla plus team now we're still in the phases of getting this thing launched our our discord is still private uh, we have not launched our website yet and these packs are not available for public download yet at least not all of them the durability viewer this was made by one of the members on my team prior to him joining uh, uh bv plus so that's available on mcpe but mcpe dl uh but uh we are going to be launching hopefully pretty soon here within about a month so if you want to hear more about bv plus and maybe get in on it early maybe even get to get a hold of these packs before they are publicly available make sure you join my discord channel links down in the description below and i think that's going to do it for today's episode so if you enjoyed it as usual click the like button click the subscribe button ring the bell to get notifications and i want to bring back one thing that we haven't done for a while and that is the tip of the day so make sure if you have a good tip for people that's related to this episode or recent episodes or just anything in general that i've covered or talk about covering in the future make sure you drop those tips down in the comment section below because i'll read the best one or best ones off in the next episode uh, or the episode after I guess it just depends on when this one comes out and when those comments start to filter through But I'll be sure to read them off because at the end of the day That's what the guy series is here for we want to make sure we help everybody have a better experience in Minecraft So thank you guys so much and you have a good one. Bye